When do you think the first human will step foot on Mars? Uh, I think it's a good chance in the 2030s that we will be on Mars. In fact, there's no physics reason why we can't do it. It's an engineering problem. It's a very difficult and dangerous engineering problem, but it is an engineering problem. The fate of all life on Earth is extinction. Those aren't the words of a doomsday prophet. They come from one of the most respected physicists alive today, Dr. Michio Kaku. And his warnings about Mars colonization will change the way you think about humanity's future in space forever. While SpaceX races toward a future on Mars, Kiku is raising alarm bells most people haven't even considered. He's spent years studying the brutal realities of interplanetary survival, and his conclusion is chilling. Mars isn't humanity's salvation. It could be our trap. This isn't science fiction. It's cold, hard scientific reality. And if we don't listen, we might be dooming the human race, not saving it. Let's break down Kaku's terrifying findings. Mars is not a backup Earth. It's a death trap. Kaku warns we're treating Mars like a plan B, a lifeboat from Earth's problems. But Mars isn't a second Earth. It's what he calls a great filter, a test of whether our species is truly ready to become spacefaring. Fail this test, and we don't just lose lives. We lose our future in the stars. People focus on rocket launches and landing tech, but Kaku goes deeper into the fundamental survival challenges no one's solving. Mars offers no protection from deadly cosmic radiation. The atmosphere is so thin, your blood would literally boil without a pressure suit. And average temperatures hover around minus 80 degrees Celsius, colder than Antarctica at its worst. But those are just the physical challenges. What keeps Kaku up at night is something even more alarming. The supply chain nightmare. Every two years, Earth and Mars align to allow cargo shipments. Miss that window? You're cut off for 26 months. No emergency supplies, no rescues, no return trips. A Mars colony, under current technology, is completely dependent on Earth. Kaku warns that a single global crisis, war, economic collapse, climate disaster, could sever that lifeline and leave colonists stranded in an unforgiving desert with no hope. This isn't a movie. It's math. And the math says we might only get one chance to do this right. The psychological collapse. Nobody talks about. Then there's the mental toll. Keiku highlights what few space agencies dare to admit. Mars will break the human mind. Imagine it. You're 140 million miles from Earth. You live in the same metal box every day, breathe recycled air, eat the same meals, and go outside in a spacesuit just to survive. Every message to Earth takes up to 24 minutes to arrive. There is no real-time contact, no real connection. Now, picture that stress, isolation, and claustrophobia building for months or years. Studies on astronauts aboard the International Space Station, just 250 miles from Earth, already show signs of depression and cognitive decline after six months. On Mars, the psychological pressure could be unbearable. As aerospace engineer Robert Zubrin puts it, we can simulate gravity, we can simulate Earth food, but we cannot simulate hope when despair sets in. Kaku believes the first Mars colony could become the site of humanity's first interplanetary mental health crisis, terraforming. Humanity's biggest delusion? Here's where Kaku's warning takes an even darker turn. Everyone talks about terraforming Mars, making it Earth-like. But Kaku has done the math, and the truth is brutal. To make Mars just slightly more habitable, we'd need to raise its temperature by 6 degrees Celsius. That would require orbiting megastructures like space mirrors or solar collectors. These projects would be so massive, they'd dwarf anything humans have ever built, including the International Space Station. Kaku says, this tech doesn't exist, and it won't for centuries. Without it, Mars stays a frozen, airless wasteland. Every drop of water, every breath of oxygen, and every calorie of food must be imported from 140 million miles away. We're planning to colonize a planet we can't even begin to make livable. That's like trying to build a skyscraper before you invent steel. We must terraform ourselves first. And here's the most surprising part of Kaku's argument. He doesn't say we shouldn't colonize Mars. He says we shouldn't do it until we've terraformed ourselves first, psychologically, socially, and technologically. 
We're rushing to escape Earth's problems before we've proven we can solve them. Kaku warns this mindset will guarantee failure. Because we won't just export our best ideas, we'll export our worst. Greed, inequality, pollution. If we don't fix those here, we'll just recreate them on Mars. The infrastructure illusion. Let's talk about scale. Elon Musk envisions a city of a million people on Mars. But Kaku asks the obvious question, how? There are no working blueprints for Mars housing, no systems that can generate power long-term in Martian dust storms, no factories that can operate in minus 80 degree temperatures with no breathable air. The only possible solution? Kaku suggests we'd need self-replicating AI-controlled robots to build infrastructure before humans even arrive. But here's the kicker. That technology doesn't exist, and may not for a hundred years. Every current plan assumes we can ship massive structures from Earth. That's a logistical fantasy. Even supplying a few astronauts is barely within reach. Supporting thousands? Impossible. We've mastered robots, not human survival. Mars rovers are a massive success. They operate for years with minimal input. When they break, we either fix them remotely or we let them die. Humans are different. We need oxygen, heat, water, food, exercise, medicine, mental stability, every hour, every day. And one failure in any of those systems is fatal. Kaku's point is devastatingly simple. We've mastered robotic exploration, but human colonization? We're not even close. Mars won't save us. It might doom us. The harshest truth? Mars won't save humanity from Earth's problems. It'll magnify them on a far more dangerous world. Kaku demolishes the myth that Mars is a great escape. He argues that if we can't fix problems like climate change or inequality on Earth, a planet perfectly suited for human life, we have zero chance of thriving on a frozen, irradiated wasteland. Colonizing Mars before solving our problems isn't progress. It's delusion. We're not abandoning a sinking ship. We're jumping into a lifeboat already full of holes the final warning. So, are we destined to repeat Earth's mistakes on Mars? Or can we build a future among the stars if we completely rethink how we approach it? Kaku doesn't want us to stop dreaming. He wants us to dream smarter, to prepare properly, to face the hard questions now before we answer them the wrong way on another world. Mars isn't going anywhere. We don't need to rush. The real question is, will we arrive as survivors or as victims of our own arrogance? Keiku's message is clear. We can colonize Mars, but only if we prove we deserve to. That means solving problems here first, learning to cooperate, building sustainable systems, supporting human mental health, mastering the responsibility of preserving life, not just launching it into space. The red planet will wait. If you found Kaku's warnings as eye-opening as we did, hit that like button and subscribe. We bring you deep dives into the science shaping our future every single week. What do you think? Should we slow down Mars colonization or push ahead despite the risks? Let us know in the comments. Because humanity's future among the stars may depend on what we do right now before it's too late.